हे इट्स प्रेरक एंड टुडे मार्क्स द ऑफिशियल बिगिनिंग टू मेक दिस कार ऑल व्हील ड्राइव This project began on July of last year and this episode is an introductory episode plus step 1 that we had to do while converting it to an all wheel drive. There are a lot of parts that need to be changed and modified in order to convert it like the ABS, transmission, fuel tank, rear subframe, brake lines and some more miscellaneous things. I will designate every episode of this series to one of the mentioned parts and dive into deeper details for all of them. In this episode we will focus on the ABS unit. why we needed to replace it what all needs to be replaced and why the car would not start up after replacing it the process began in july of 2023 we got the car inside of our workshop which was just a room cut out of my dad's warehouse it was necessary to have some sort of a confined space to store all the parts and have everything in one place so as to not lose it throughout the process and to have a quiet space to work in according to the hours we found comfortable we would usually work during the night and sometimes it would stretch all the way till early morning in this episode we are going to focus on the abs i needed to upgrade the abs on the car as it only supported asr and not esp but for proper functioning of heldex which is the control unit for power transmission to the rear wheels esp was needed ASR stands for anti slip regulation and ESP stands for electronic stability program or protocol. ASR just cuts the power of the engine when it notices that the front wheels are spinning or slipping. While ESP monitors the speed of each wheel at all times and applies brake to any particular wheel to stabilize the car. It is needed as Heldex notices if the front wheels are losing grip and accordingly sends power to the rear wheels to hopefully stop them from slipping. this helps it launch better and it is exactly the reason why i am doing this conversion so for this we need to add an esp compatible abs unit it can be found out of an automatic shoda super from 2010 to 13 or automatic volkswagen jetta as well of the same year we need the abs unit the bracket with which it has been mounted to the chassis as it is different for both abs units We also need the bigger connector and need to rewire the existing ABS wiring to accept the new ABS. Using a very helpful guide online, I started this process of upgrading my ABS. I sat there inside the engine bay of the car, cutting away wires, stripping them and soldering them onto the new connector one by one. I have this schematic for it as you can see. This says which pin of the original connector corresponds to the pin of the new connector so one goes to one two goes to 37 and just like that i'll need to uh, repin or actually cut the wires and rewire this entirely ideally what i would want to do is uh, decrimp this remove each and every terminal and install it in the new one but the crimps the terminals are actually different so unfortunately we cannot do that that would have been the cleanest way but now the only option left is to cut the wires separately connect them separately so it's going to be a little time consuming and we need to make sure that we do it correctly because it's really essential that abs works properly and it is wired correctly otherwise the moment we give it power it can blow up by blow up i mean it can malfunction and stop working entirely which will be expensive it took me a couple of hours to do them all properly adding heat shrink to all of them one of the wires needed to be ran to the fuse box located in the engine bay itself as an additional power specifically for the esp this was the only extra wire that was needed rest all were reconnected from the original harness of the vehicle after the brake lines were put back on i gave the car power to check if the abs unit would accept the new coding it was working just fine but it had a fault of the yaw rate sensor being faulty which indicated that the abs unit i used out of the donor car which was a superb vr6 was faulty So a quick visit to the scrapyard later I picked up another ABS unit out of a newer 2 liter TDI Jetta which was connected accepted the coding and showed errors which would have been erased by doing basic setting for the ABS However to do them I needed the car running but after all of this the car decided to do this
It would turn on for a short while and then shut right after. This had me confused as the ECU had no faults. There was fuel, there was spark, air as well and no faults related to how it was acting. I tried my luck with it for two days with no luck. The problem still remained. This episode is just the tip of the iceberg with the problems that I had to face, difficulty of the steps and the fun just goes higher from here. In the next episode, we will see what caused this, what was the solution and we will take a much deeper dive into the process of choosing the correct transmission for such a build and why I went with an automatic instead of the manual. So stay tuned.